Welcome to East Salinas, where the violence rate instigated by the police and gangs is higher than the country's average rate. It is also here where the LSL School District is located and where approximately 9,000 students are enrolled, of which 5,000 are academically behind a year or two. Historically, the LSL District has been under the control of two unions, the LSL Teachers Association and Chapter 577 of the California School Employees Association. These unions, with the support of some of the richest Salinas Valley men, such as Jeff Taylor and Don Chapin, and politicians and labor unions organized under the Monterey Central Labor Council, the CSEA and ATA have successfully defamed, attacked, and silenced LSL district parents who demand a quality education. Today, we invite you to meet a member of the 577 chapter of the California School Employees Association. Juan Gabriel Sandoval, who has been leading the recall against Meredith Ibarra and Jose Castañeda, two community leaders. To better know this man, it is necessary to go back to the mid-90s, during the pinnacle of the Vagos 13 gang. According to the report number 94021771, located at the Monterey County Court, Juan Gabriel Sandoval was arrested on February 27, 1994, for the possession of cocaine, a felony. Arrested along with him were Juan Manuel Sanchez and Alberto Esparza Sandoval. The first arrest was for being in possession of cocaine and receiving and selling stolen property and carrying a 9mm handgun. The second Apart from being arrested for receiving and selling stolen property and carrying a 9mm handgun, was also arrested for possessing marijuana for sale and being in the possession of a short-barreled shotgun and a 22 Rucker rifle, which had been stolen. Juan Gabriel Sandoval did not learn his lesson, and a year later, on March 17, 1995, he was arrested along with his brother Martin Sandoval and Rigo Ramirez. The crime, according to the documents filed at the Monterey County Court, number 9503107, Juan Gabriel Sandoval was charged with attempted robbery in the second degree. Documents state that said crime was committed for the benefit of the Vagos 13 gang. This crime took place on March 16, 1995, around 6.52 p.m. on the 900th block of of Garner Avenue. When Juan Gabriel and a group of more than five gang members tried to rob Mario Espinosa, a 21-year-old man. During the attack, the father of Mario Espinosa was shot. The Salinas, California newspaper briefly reported about this incident on its Friday edition, March 17, 1995, on page 3C. Three years later, on Monday, June 1, 1998, when Juan Gabriel Sandoval was already 23 years old, the city of Salinas disclosed the names of 63 Los Vagos members who had been served with civil injunctions that same weekend. Juan Gabriel Sandoval was included in this gang injunction. According to the gang injunction, the Vagos gang was responsible for such crimes as homicides, robberies, drugs, arson, and drive-by shootings. At that time, Juan Gabriel Sandoval was already an employee of the LSL School District. As you can see, the Salinas, California newspaper published a complete list of names and related articles on Tuesday, June 2nd, 1998. With all this evidence, Juan Gabriel Sandoval still denies having been a member of a gang. According to Jeff Mitchell, who uses his work as a tool for turning villains into heroes and heroes into villains, said that he directly asked Juan Gabriel Sandoval if he had ever been a gang member. Juan Gabriel Sandoval's response was a no. Jeff Mitchell said that he had submitted a request under the California Public Records Act and promised to let his readers know about any findings. Obviously, he found much more than what he bargained for. 
but it seems that in order to protect the villain he turned into a hero activist, he has not published anything about the subject. A tree that is born with a twisted trunk can never straighten. On February 13, 2014, members of the Alisal Taxpayers Association video documented Juan Gabriel Sandoval cruising around the city of Salinas when he was supposed to be at work. That same day, Juan Gabriel Sandoval was seen grabbing a gasoline container from the Alisal District's Maintenance Department. Minutes later, he is seen driving an Alisal District Maintenance Department truck towards the city of Chular. The gasoline was for his brother, who is a teacher with the Chular School District. Federal and state laws prohibit the personal use of school district equipment. According to his co-workers, this is not the first time that Juan Gabriel Sandoval has used the Alisal District equipment for personal use. According to them, on other occasions, Juan Gabriel Sandoval has used district equipment to perform side jobs during work hours and for his ongoing construction at his property on Elkington Avenue. Even more so, his co-worker stated Juan Gabriel Sandoval continuously abused his work hours to the point that they baptized him with the nickname Ghost because Mr. Sandoval usually disappears during work hours. Now you know one of the reasons why Juan Gabriel Sandoval is asking the voters to recall Ms. Meredith Ibarra. Meredith Ibarra, with the support of community organizations, has tried to put an end to these violations and misuse of school resources. Well, not supposed to be on campus, but, huh? That's the voice of Juan Sandoval, who has become one of Castaneda's biggest critics, even starting a recall effort against the Salinas Councilman. In return, Sandoval says he's been followed and harassed by Castaneda at home and at work. In this video, recorded by Castaneda's supporters, Sandoval, with gas can in hand, goes to help his stranded brother. Worst of all, it seems that the same CSEA and ATA school employee unions and Alisal district board members are determined in protecting Juan Gabriel Sandoval and protecting his illegal activities. A clear example of this are the comments made by Maricela Cruz, president of the Alisal District Board of Trustees, and according to gang experts, a member of the Vagos 13 gang. Castaneda says Sandoval was stealing gas. Cruz says he did nothing wrong. We have reached the end of the first part of this documentary. Now, it is time for you to question these Alisal District employees who have been visiting you and lying to voters to convince them to remove Miss Meredith Ibarra from the Alisal Union School District Board of Trustees. These employees have four votes in their favor. While parents and students from the Alisal District can count on only one vote, that of Miss Meredith Ibarra. And don't forget to thank these employees because due to the enormous and historical increase in salaries and benefits they gave to themselves, many children will not get the academic help they so much need. In the second part of this documentary, we will share some scenes from public Alisal School District board meetings in which you will be able to see the mistreatment orchestrated by the Alisal School District Board President, Maricela Cruz, against parents and community members. We hope that you will join us.